With Allah's name, the merciful, the fact of the merciful, the redeemer. Alhamdulillahi wa rabbil alameen. The praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the world, full of mercy and compassion. We say that it is always Allah's will to guide us and to keep us on al surat al that is it's our desire to be on the straight path Allah will guide us there and keep us there alhamdulillah wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah there is none deserving worship Nahnu, we witness that there is none to be worshipped except Allah alone. Wahdahu la sharika lahu. Al Khalik al Kuli Shaykh, the creator of everything. Al Malik, Al Malik al Muk the sovereign of everything that exists in creation. He says, or he has revealed in the Quran, Lam yilid wa lam yulad wa lam yakunahu kufuwan ahad That he begetteth not, that he doesn't make babies, he doesn't procreate, he creates babies in the wombs of their mothers. And, and likewise, he never was a baby. Allah was not created. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah, he rabbi alameen. And he says, Allah says that there's nothing like him. Alhamdulillah, he rabbi alameen. <clears throat> he also, Allah also revealed that no just estimate have they made of Allah such as do him. And we, Similarly, underestimate Allah. Man in his infinite, his, his seemingly infinite wisdom, or his, his pseudo-infinite wisdom, sometimes he becomes so large that he sees himself as independent. But only Allah is an al -Ghani, the one that is totally independent of everyone and everything. Alhamdulillah, And Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the universal messenger prophet to whom Allah revealed the Quran, he is the messenger of Allah. And Allah, he tells of him, us of him that you will find in him an excellent, an excellent example and that he is the example for all the people who have hopes in Allah and Yom Qiyamah in the last day. 
Allah, he asked of us in the Quran, he says, Ya ayyuh al-lazina amanu taqa Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamuntuna illa wa antum muslimun to be serious, upfront, and truthful about our taqwa, our relationship with Allah, to be sincere with it. And don't die unless we're Muslim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbi Alameen. So, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are now in the almost the, the last, approaching the last ten nights of Ramadan, the month of fasting. We say that Ramadan is the month that brings back the mind. It puts our mind back where our mind is supposed to be. It puts our focus where our focus is supposed to be. Yes, our focus, our orientation. You know, sometimes because of our daily life and practice, many times things become monotonous. Monotonous means it meaning it's just mundane, it's just routine. It doesn't, doesn't seem like it has a lot of pump behind it. So in the course of time, we'll lose our sense of direction or our orientation. And so Ramadan, even though we pray, we may pray five times a day and face the Qibla, but in the month of Ramadan, everything is focusing even more so everything becomes even more so focused. So it's here to help us to keep, to get and keep our focus, to keep our sense of direction, to be mindful of where we're going, what we're doing, how we're doing it, etc. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbi Alameen. We're taught that the month of Ramadan is broken into three parts. The first being mercy, and then forgiveness, and then freedom from the fire, the hellfire. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbi Alameen. And the one thing we know for certain that we, we must have is we must have a lot of mercy. <clears throat> Times seem difficult. But we believe that after every difficulty comes relief or comes ease. And we'll always face hardships. That's part of life. Our life's journey begins with what we take in. And life will take its proper, its proper course based on what we put out. You know, during the month of Ramadan, we're supposed to be careful. We're even more careful about what we take in. And we, we have to be mindful of what's going inside. You know, we think maybe it's just the physical body. But we have to be also mindful of what's going inside of our mind, what's going inside of our hearts, what's coming into our life. And one, the, the things that get us into the most trouble are our, our appetites that go unchecked. So during the month of Ramadan, everything is in check. We, have, we take a break during the daylight, even from those good things. Yeah. Food is good for us. Well, I don't know, maybe some of the food that we find out nowadays ain't that good for us in the first place. But to satisfy our hunger, you know, it's a good thing, our thirst. But, if, but while the sun is up, or while the day is out, then we're to refrain from doing just about it, all the things that we normally do in the daytime. And then we partake of those things under the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, we don't do what we want to do when we want to do it. We do it when Allah has asked of us, when Allah, what Allah says and when Allah says. I have made a, a coin, a phrase, it's not just what you eat, but it's also when you eat. Yeah. So we eat under the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we drink under the guidance of Allah. And we're going back 
to that nature, the natural self. There was a time when people, you know, they weren't like us these days. You know, we got a refrigerator at home, cabinets. You know, we can store food, freeze food, refrigerate food. But there was a time when people couldn't do that. There was a time when people had to hunt if they wanted to eat meat, unless they had some domesticated animals. So it wasn't that easy. You know, we, when we consume something that's easy, we can go to the store, go to the supermarket, steaks are already cut, meat's already butchered. You don't have to do nothing, you know, because sometimes, you know, if we see an animal butcher, we might not, we might not want to eat it. You know, I bought some, I, I was at the meat market the other day, you know, I bought some uh, quail, you know, that's the little bird. And my wife said, I ain't going to eat them. <laughs> she said, I just saw a little bird flying out there in the backyard. And now you brought one here, and you can ready to eat that. You have to cook that and eat it yourself. <laughs> so, 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 some, so we, we don't have to really deal with all of that now because we we have it so convenient that you know we don't we don't see the animal slaughtered. We just consume it, and, and when if tar time comes around, we own it. I'm really like what they mean, but the point is that we. We're, 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 what we take in, what we take in and when we take in is very important. When we, when we take in something, this sign and this symbol is that we're taking it in under the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When iftar kind, if, when iftar comes, when the sun sets, that's when we're allowed to consume food. How many, how, many, how many times have we just taken a bite of something not even concerned with whether we could or should? We don't, we don't really pay attention to that. But during the month of Ramadan, we, pay, we have to pay a close attention to when we're going to eat. You know, because we watch the clock. You know, we're watching, I mean, we, when, you know, we're really precise with it, too. As soon as Magra come right there, the, the, the clock says 8.32. I mean, 8.32 in one second, them dates is going to get consumed. That water is going to get drunk. Yeah, right away. Alhamdulillah, he loved God me. That, uh, the anticipation of waiting for what Allah said to do and to do it, you know, it brings about a certain spirit. It, bur it brings about a certain dynamic. Doing what Allah says, do what Allah says, do it. It brings about a certain calm and a, per a certain satisfaction. He says, Allah says, those who believe and whose hearts find satisfaction in the remembrance of Allah, for without a doubt, the in the remembrance of Allah, do the hearts find satisfaction. Yeah, so, so this whole experience, you know, the whole month is an experience in zikr. It's a 24 hour a day fast. You know, sometimes, sometimes we get the impression that we just fasting from dawn to sunset. But no, in the month of Ramadan, we're fasting 24 hours. We're just not consuming food during the daylight hours. But the fast, the spirit of the fast, it's a, it's a 24 hour, seven days a week, the whole 30 days. We're supposed to be in the spirit of Ramadan the entire time of the day. We're never supposed to come out of that spirit. We're supposed to avoid vain conversation. Any, anything, that, anything that we know, that we feel, that we believe is un-Islamic, that's unbecoming, we're supposed to avoid that during the month of Ramadan. And not just during the daylight, but all the time, the whole night. When the night comes, that don't mean we're supposed to, you know, put on our other face, you know. You know, like the, the, guy, in Bat, the guy in Batman, they call him Two-Face. You see one side, got a smile, the other side, boy, it's horrible. It looked like, 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 like some got him. We're not supposed to be like that. I don't know. We're supposed to have that same face, that same demeanor, those same virtues, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's supposed to be so profound that it's to carry on beyond Ramadan. We are taught by way of Muhammad, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that, that Ramadan is the model month. It is the month that we're to mold and shape every other month of the year around. So we don't digress and, and go back, we move forward. 
Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. There is no God except Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. <coughs> so Allah, he says, he, he mentions in the Quran for us, he says, he says, fasting was prescribed for us like it was prescribed for people before us, that we may learn self-restraint. That self-restraint is to keep the shaitan, you know, keep the, keep the, keep the, the devil away. We're taught that the devil is in chains. If, if something devil is going on right now and the devil is in chains, I won't even say anything else about that. But if something, is, something evil goes, you know, evil don't stop just because we're fasting. You know, just like, a, you know, evil is like a virus. You know, right now, like right now, everybody, you know, we, everybody is panicking, you know, we, well, we're coming down off the panic level now from the virus, you know. You know, and that virus, you know, a virus is, a, you know, it's like a, an infection, and it, and, it, and it replicates in living matter. That's how Iblis is. Iblis, he replicates in, in the living person, uh, inside the person. Once we're exposed to Iblis, or a, a, a tendency of, of, of that like that, it starts to replicate. It starts to grow. We call it if it's outside of us, you know, they call it a virus, but you can't see the virus either. You can't see that. And anytime something evil is going on in the world, and anytime something bad is going on, you can always trace it back to a person. Sometimes we get the impression that we think that this is something outside of us. But as soon as a thought comes or a suggestion comes that's evil or that's wrong, it's just like a virus. And if, it, if we're not careful, you know, we're allowed to mutate. You know, that's what you know, they, they, they use that language. They say a, the, the virus and then the variants of the virus. You know, a variant is the same thing, a little different, but it's just as deadly. Yeah, it's equally as dead, deadly. Viruses, variant of the virus, that's like Iblis and Shaitan. You know, when, 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 the police, when the police comes along, you know, when we read the Quran and we hear about the police, the police is really having a conversation with Allah. But when he started dealing with, when he started dealing with Adam, you hear the word shaitan. Yeah, when he's talking to Allah, he's just rebelling. You know, Iblis means to rebel. And that's what happens, you know. When we hear something, if we go against it, it's rebellion. That's the nature of Iblis. You know, that's how Iblis is. Iblis of oh, I don't want to do it. I ain't doing it. And when it starts working, and it goes to work, starts to influence, then it's shaitan. Alhamdulillahi Rabbi Alameen. And, and the vac there's a vaccine for that, though. And then they got the, the virus, the variant, and the vaccine. And the vaccine for Iblis and Shaitan is the Quran. Yes, it's the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, if we want to really get rid of that, 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 that unseen force that creates all this fitna, we have to go to the source. We have to go to the source. And that source is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, he's going to be all in me. You know, you know a, a, a virus, they say a virus, it only, it only exists to reproduce. That's what they say about it. And the makeup of it is what gives us a, its ability to spread. And it can be spread through, you know, they say it can be spread through many things. You can breathe it in, you can touch it, you know. It's all kind of ways to get, get that virus. Just like it's all kind of ways to be influenced by Iblis and Shaitan. You know, in this day and time, Shaitan is so thorough in everything. There's nothing that the devil ain't in. Absolutely nothing. Everything that you can touch, everything that you can smell, every, especially in this part of the world. I mean, I mean, look, look, look what they do to our food. Look what they do to the air. Look what they do to the water. Look what they do to everything. They put something in it. 
So there's no place where Shaitan won't put his hands. And so we go to the source, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to keep our hands clean, to keep our, to keep our purity, to keep our faith, to keep from being overwhelmed by those substances that are in the world that are designed to take you away from your orientation, to take you away from the kibbutz, to take you away from that focus that we should have as Muslims. Alhamdulillahi Rabbi Alameen. So uh, Allah, he says that, that fasting was prescribed for us just like it was prescribed for those people who came before us so that we can learn how to control ourselves. So we can learn self-restraint. So that we can increase our taqwa. But it's really not so well or how much you can fast is how much can you obey Allah. Because obedience to Allah is what we're looking, is what we're looking at. How well can we do that? How well can we carry out that out? In a, in a society like we're in right now where we're prone to be rebellious, we're, see, we're opinionated. And we get to the point where we think we know better. But we don't know better. When, I, when it comes to fasting, Allah says, Allah says when it comes to fasting, he says, if you're ill or on a journey, you can, you, can, you can make that up later. But he says, and then he says, do what you can do. I'm paraphrasing it. As far as charity is concerned, but it's better for you if you fast if you only knew. That's the language that's used. That, that's, that it's better for you if you restrain yourself if you keep that spirit, that's better for you if you only knew. Because it's not, it's not only so about what you're, you know, because some people, because of their medical condition, they may not be able to fast. But during the Ramadan, you should still be, have the spirit of the fast in you. When you know it's Ramadan, you're supposed to automatically conform to what, all of the things that Ramadan dictates. And if, you, if, if some condition is on you, like some of their people that are diabetic, they, they have to eat during the day. You know, hopefully they don't, you know, they won't eat around you and make you hungry, but they have to eat. So, and when that happens, if that happens, then, you know, that's, a, the, that's, some, that's some, something that they have to deal with. But they still have to keep the spirit of Ramadan, or should keep the spirit of Ramadan in them all day, every day. Now, we're taught that if you, if you can't, if, if it's too difficult for you, you, then you have to feed someone else. You have to take care of somebody else. In other words, during the month of Ramadan, you cannot just do nothing. You have to do something. You can't excuse yourself from it. You might be able to excuse yourself from actually not eating or not drinking, but the, whole, the spirit of it, you have to have that spirit. You must have and maintain that spirit. Alhamdulillah, <clears throat> Rabbi Alameen. Allah, he says that he, it is not his desire, it is not the desire of Allah to make it difficult for us. Allah wants it to be easy for us. But if we want things to get easy, we have to accept the struggle. We have to accept the difficulty. Because we know that after difficulty comes ease. Alhamdulillah, bismillah rahman rahim amin. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, so we said, we said that, that Iblis is like a virus. And as he grows, all these difficulties and all these variants that they're talking about, that they talk about, all of that working against, that be working against us, and that can undermine us. But we said that the vaccine for that is the Quran. And the Sunnah of Muhammad, Muhammad the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, he rabbi alameen. I 
I wanted to mention a thing I think is kind of relevant. Due to all the, the issues of the, the current day and time we live in here in America, and the world, but in, in America. <clears throat> in, this in, this, in this part of the world, right now, we're still dealing with an issue, with issues that, you know, we, we would think that in this day and time we have, would have overcome them. <clears throat> And I'm going to digress a little bit back to the prophet's uh, farewell address, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there's one thing that he said in his farewell address, reported that he said, he said that there was no superiority of an Arab over a non-Arab. And then he, backed that, he came back and it reversed it a little bit. He said, and there's no superiority of a non-Arab over an Arab. And, you know, I asked myself, I said, why did, he, why did he say that? That's not, that's even before he said that there's no superiority of a white over a black or a black over a white. But the first thing he said was there's no superiority of an Arab over a non-Arab and vice versa. During the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the, the, the most, some of the most scholarly people of that time were the, were the Jews. They were the, some of the torch bearers of knowledge. And they were people who, could, who just could flat out not, they just flat out refused to accept that the Muhammad was the prophet. So where are you going with that? And in their, and in their culture and in their faith, they have become so uh, larger, larger than life in the world that they call themselves God's chosen people. I was at a, I got invited to a, a memorial service for a, a, a Jewish leader some time ago. And the rabbi, when he spoke, he said, we, speaking to them, we are the world's jewelry. That's what he said. And I said, wow, man, I, do they get this every Saturday? I mean, he, boy, the way he talked about the Jews and the way he talked about his people, I mean, the way he puffed that up, the way he talked about how we are, what we should be, and how, how what kind of, how, how could anything like this happen in our community? We are the world's jewelry. I said, man, well, I, I said, I'll, I'll be back Saturday. <laughs> I felt like I was jewelry when he said that. I said, I, I want to be... But no, no, so now, so, so the people who call themselves, you know, I'm not talking about the Jews. I don't, I'm not trying to browbeat them. <laughs> but you know, you can't even be a Jew unless your mom a Jew. And, and I mean, a true Jew. And so they think that they're sometimes, you know, people because of the prophecy came through them, the knowledge came through them, the wisdom came through them, they think they're better than all other people. And so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there's no superiority of it. He didn't want the Arabs to come into that same mentality that the Jews came into. But he wanted to make it clear too that don't, just because I said that don't make you think that if you're not an Arab, you're better than them. So we, none of us are supposed to think we're better than somebody else. That's the spirit of Iblis. That's what happened. Allah said, what's wrong with you, man? What's wrong with you, dude? That you won't bow down before uh, the, the uh, Adam here. What's up with that? You know, that's, that's our language. You know, we can get with that. What's up with that? Man, there's something wrong with you. And he said, I'm better than him. You created him, me out of fire. And you created him out of mud. And Allah said, you, you got to get out of here with that. So that, that spirit that somebody is better than somebody, that's, that's a virus. That's like a virus. Get in there and just infect, just infect the whole mind, the whole body, everything about the person. Gets infected with that kind of thinking. And so they start acting like they're better than somebody else. And then he said there's no superiority of a white over a black 
or a black over a white. Now, it isn't, that's, the, that's the root of the problem. The arrogance that comes with something, someone thinking that they're better than another person or better than another people. Just let that sink in for a minute. When people think they're better than somebody else, that's when all the fitness starts. Now, the, the situation in this country you know, that, that we've been, been dealing with for the last 400 years plus, it's not just simply racism. People say, that's racist, he's racist. Every time they, they want to play the race card, I said, no, it's, it's beyond that. It's superiority. It's racial superiority. It's a people thinking that they're better than another people. Then it becomes race. You know, the race, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's peripheral. But the first problem is that some, the rich think they're better than poor people. Don't they? They don't think that you come up in there and you go up to a, a, a five-star restaurant and you ain't dressed right. You ain't getting in here. You go up, to, go up to a mansion, knock on the door with your cup in your hand. Shoot, if the dogs don't get you, first before you can get there, the dogs or the surveillance system, you know, cameras, the police, whatever, that don't get you. If you can get, if you finally get to the door, then they're going to probably look out of the way. Call, they had to call, come somebody, to get them off my porch. Come get them. Educated people think they're better than non-educated people. Knowledgeable th people think they're better than people that don't have as much knowledge. So this, this problem that we're having, this problem that people are having, especially in this affluent part of the world, you know, we're in a, we are, we are in a, in a materialistically, in, I mean, it's a, it's the dynamics of materialism are off the scale here. Even the poor folks over here, you, they act like they're rich, they act like they got something. You know, even poor folks walk off the looking down on people, looking down on other poor folks. See, Ramadan is supposed to come in and provide the vaccine for all of that. See, they give you a state, they give you, they just punch a little needle in your arm and you're supposed to be all right, huh? No, you gotta read a little something. You gotta start digesting what you're reading in the Quran a little bit more. You got to take that to heart. You start have to start using that. You have to start referring to it. It has to be what you call yourself about. You have to be about what Prophet Muhammad was about, and Prophet Muhammad was about the Quran. Now we now we're taught that this is the month that the Quran was revealed. Allah He says in the Quran, Allah says, "Ar Rahmanu Allah Al Quran Khalq Al Insan Alamahu Bayan." The merciful God. The merciful Allah, what did he do? He taught the Quran and created man. Allah is telling us in this surah, in that particular verse, those particular verses, that our very creation is tied to the Quran being taught to us. Yeah, it's a sign that if you really want to, if you really want your creation to be like it's supposed to be, if you want to be manifested the way you're supposed to be manifested, then the Quran has to be taught to you. That's our source. That's how we overcome these viruses. That's how we overcome these variants. And I'm talking about the variants that come from the spirit of Iblis. That's how we overcome all of that. We overcome that by going and seeking and familiarizing ourselves with the word of Allah all the time. During the month of Ramadan, we're, we're, it's our tradition to read the whole Quran. I don't think there's any other faith, community, that has as a tradition to read the entire scripture in a, in a month. I don't think they do it. I mean, they might, I mean, I know it's people that's going to go to it, they're going to read it. But all of us, especially the males, the females too, the women ain't exempt from that. You know, we exempt them from it. But women, they have the same responsibility to present themselves as a proper Muslim that men have. All of us do. There's no one that's a, that, that has, none of us, you know, got to get out of, get out of Islam free card, unless it's to Jehannam. You can get out and you go there. 
anytime you want to. You know, the hell, hell don't never close the door on you. If, if, if you want to go, you, I mean, you even got a key to it. Everybody got a key to hell. You can get in there anytime you want, but everybody got a key to, to the agenda also. You got them two keys. <clears throat> How many of you are here about God? I mean, so this situation that we're facing in the world today, and especially in this part of the world, is due to the due to the to the, the notion that people think that they're better than other people for whatever reason. And we have to stop letting that be the case for us. You know, we say this is we call this Uma, this is one Uma. It's supposed to be. But look, it's how many, how many separate ones it is, though. We, come, we hardly, hardly come together. We come together sometimes, but we don't come together like we're supposed to. No, we don't do that. But we should. How many like it all God I mean? See, and that, this, this arrogance, and I, I, we forgot we all came from Adam. Caucasian people, you know, I don't like to say white people and black people, because there ain't no such thing as really white people. And there's no such thing as black people, colored people, people of, you know, we just have to, you know, we have to use that kind of language because it's been so thoroughly ingrained in us that we have to say black and white, you know. But, you know, people that, that fair complexion, you know, they're <coughs> European or Caucasian. And Caucasians have been, been duped just like other people have. They've been duped into thinking they're better than some of them. I don't tell you, don't see, don't go in every person you see that's Caucasian. There's something walking around out here. For instance, this is a guy walked around here, and I mean, I just got into it with this man. I don't even know how he can even walk around here and still show his face. He didn't pull a knife on me. He didn't call me everything in the book, the N word and everything, and I ain't beat him down yet because, you know, if I do that, then it'd be on the news. Yeah, if I, if I go in and guff him, because <laughs> I feel like I'd be like I'm, I, I, I'm gonna just go, but 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 he, and he's a Caucasian man, and he thinks I'm telling you his mindset is, he thinks that he's better than anybody any one of us over here. He do. He, that's it. That's you know. It was, back when I was a kid, they had this movie called this the television show called Tarzan, and they called Tarzan the Lord of the Jungle. He was a man, Caucasian man, walking around with a loincloth on, half now, I mean, strict, almost buck naked, just had something covering, covering itself up in the middle, middle section there, swinging through the trees, hollering, and they called him the Lord of the Jungle. The Lord, they didn't say he was a man in the jungle, they said he was the Lord of the Jungle. And they was letting, letting, they was letting them know that, that they cheapest white man was better than any of us. All them, them Africans running around in the jungle, dark-skinned people running around in the jungle, but he was the Lord of it. That's the mentality that they have. They think that they're better than us, period. And not only them, a whole lot of people think that. You go play, I done been places, you know, I done traveled the world. I done seen racism from every, I done seen it all the way. Or superior, let me change that. I done seen people who think they're better than other people from every perspective. Because I said, when it gets down to racism, that's really down at a lower level. I mean, and, and you know, down and when it gets down to that low level, you know, like the grass is down low, and it's everywhere. So it seems like it's everywhere, you know, because it's down. It, it just pushed down so low, it, it seems like it's covering everything. But really, it's up there. It's up there in somebody's mind. You know, I, I know I'm better than him. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they do. I'm better than them. That has to change. If it don't change, we're going to implode. Implosion is not like an explosion. Explosion when it blow out. Implosion when it collapses inward. So if we don't address if we don't address adequately address these issues, you know, and take care of it, eradicate it, then we're going to collapse in on ourselves. So this month of Ramadan gives us the occasion to do that introspection. Is there, is that me? You know, it's just like, you know, when you read the first parts of the Quran, you know, a whole lot in there about, you know, there's a surah called about the hypocrites when that's the But you, boy, that, that, that word is showing up so much in them first, them first five or six uh, 
uh, surahs of the Quran, is we're supposed to make dua that, that we, don't, we don't exhibit those, those uh, signs of hypocrisy. And this, this month of fashion that we're undergoing, this gives us the occasion to rid ourselves of everything that creates vice inside our heart, that creates fitness, because the fitness is coming from inside and then manifests itself on the outside. Whatever it is that's going on in here and up here, whatever's going on between the heart and the brain, is manifested out there. That's where it's showing. It's going to show up. I said anything that's evil, anything that's bad that's going on, anything that's corrupt, you can always trace it back to a person. Yeah, so-and-so did that. Hitler did it, or Mussolini did it, or somebody. You won't say, you won't go back, you won't say Iblis did it. The devil did, you know, uh, uh, you might say the devil did it. How many of you be all of me? So arrogance, this, this, that's the nature of Iblis, it's like a virus. It spreads like a variant. But if we have the Quran, then we had the vaccine for it. Because Allah says that this, the Quran is a healing. It's a healing for us. And we have to take that medicine. So don't just go through the month of Ramadan and don't read the Quran. That's what, really, that's what, that's what we're going to conclude with. Don't let this whole month go and not finish reading the Quran. If you haven't started yet, I, I, you know, I know you haven't started yet, because I'm, I'm behind a day or two. But I'm, you know, I ain't, and I don't, I'm not making an excuse. But don't let the month pass and you haven't read the Quran. As much of it as you possibly can. And let that saturate. Let it grow on you. If, if you don't read the Quran regularly, you're going you, you're going to become a tool of Satan. And, I, and I'm, I'm going to add to that. If you don't read the Quran regularly and apply it, you're going to become a tool of Satan. It's, it's no other way. And it's, and, it, and, it's, and it's ludicrous. Actually, it's, 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 it should be, we should consider it a just straight out crazy if we allow ourselves not to become familiar, more and more familiar, familiar with the Quran. Even if you don't understand the Arabia, the translation is good enough. Most of the English translations are good enough for you if you spoke English or most of the translations are good enough that if it's another language, it's good enough for you to at least get a ballpark view of what it's, what it's driving at. You might not be able to connect it with its history, but you, you can read it for what it's trying, the message for what it's trying to convey. Yeah. So, it says, in it is a night, the night of power, better than a thousand months, better than a lifetime. And that's coming up soon. I think the, today is the 18th day. So we got two more days and we're into the last 10, 10 days. But don't let the month of Ramadan go by and you haven't familiarized yourself as best you can with the Quran. Alhamdulillah, you all God and me. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Hamba salli ta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Hamma baraka ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Fi al-alameen. Inna ka hamidu majid. Ameen. Ameen. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Shabbat ala ilaha illallah. Shabbat ala Muhammad Rasulullah.
just like uh, uh, this might be our last Ramadan. Make this prayer this so it's your last prayer. Allahu Akbar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmanirrahim. مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدي لصرد المستقيم صرد الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahilladhi Anzal ala abdihi al-kitab Wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja Hayyman li yudhir bahthan shadidan Min ladunhu wa'du bashra mu'minin مباشر المؤمنين الذين يعلمون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا مكين فيه أبدا وينذر الذين قالوا تخلد الله ولدا ما لهم به من علم ولا لآباء كبر الكلمة تخرج من أفواهه إن يقولون إلا كذبا فلا لك باخعون أسف على آثارهم إن لم يؤمنوا بهذا الهديث أسفا إن جنة ما على العاجزين تلا لنبلوهم عيوم أحسن وملا وإن لجعلون ما عليها صعيد جرزا أما حسبت أن أسحاب الكحف ورقيم كانوا من عيات عجبا إذ أوفت يتو إلى الكحف فقالوا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وحي لنا من أمرنا رشدا الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم 
مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا السرد المشتكين سرد الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا وما أدراك ما ليه لطول ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنأذر الملائكة عروق فيها بإذن ربهم من كل عام سالم هجها السامة إلا فجر الله أكبر الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر to mention that uh the uh, uh the id the idle fitter is scheduled for may the 13th which is uh two weeks from yesterday it's a thursday morning uh it be at uh, the talk beer with it will start at 9 30 in charlotte and uh it's in particular the the night, the, the last ten nights of Ramadan, we'll have we'll be having the Tardawi prayers. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And I think the uh, the food, uh, the Islamic Food Bank will be out tomorrow. And we also have some some uh, meals for uh, iftar this evening. If they'll be here. You can pick them up, or, or if you call, uh, somebody might can deliver them to you if you don't have transportation. But there'll be some meals here. There'll be they normally they out on the freezer out there if you come in, come inside and get them. You saying something too? You are? You know it's a fee to get this mic from me. Abdul Halim, there will be some more food downstairs on the table also. Yeah. Um, the market. Yeah, we also get food uh, donated to us as well that we keep downstairs on the table, inshallah. Um, we have, so far, we've been providing food every day for the community. And so we want to try to continue that for the rest of the month of Ramadan, inshallah. So if you can, you know, we have our box in the front and the POS system. Please contribute so we can keep that going. Um, we're also trying to get funds together to be able to provide a full halal meal for